What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to build a simple conversational app using the OpenAI GPT API that everyone has been freaking out about online. So without further ado, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, let's open up Xcode and create a new project. We'll stick with the app template. I'm going to call this chat AI. We'll use UI Kit and Swift today since we're focusing mainly on the API. We'll toss this onto my desktop and first things first, we actually want to bring in a client library to make these API calls. Adam Rush has actually built a really nice wrapper in Swift for the OpenAI API, which we're going to bring in by just copying the URL and using Swift Package Manager. So going back to Xcode, we'll hit File, Add Packages. I'll go ahead and paste this guy in here. There it is. We want to bring this one in. Just hit that button right there. Should find it pretty fast. And then we'll hit Add Package. Let's actually give this a build and run in a simulator first and foremost to make sure everything is compiling and good to go. I think I've got a simulator opened up right here. It in fact is awesome. So the next thing I'll draw your attention to is the OpenAI website. You can actually head on over here, create a free account, and they have a uh, in beta developer program where you can get a uh, API key generated that I've got here. You can use it on a free trial basis. There's also a premium plan where you can pay. You don't have to. So to follow along, just grab a free API key. Cool, so the first thing we actually wanna do is I'm gonna focus on creating an API caller object where we will wrap all of our API calls. So we'll create a new file here. It'll be a Swift file. And I'm gonna call it API caller, just like that. Now inside of here, we want to import the OpenAI Swift package that we brought in and actually declare our class, which will be API caller. And we're gonna access this via a shared singleton since this will hold the instantiated uh, OpenAI client that we'll put together. So let's actually privatize that initializer like so. And let's actually create a public setup function in here that actually instantiates a client of type API or open API, I should say. So like I've said API a million times in this video already. So we'll say open AI Swift. And then we want to pass in our auth token like so. Now it's a little dirty to do it directly in line. So what I'll do is I will create a enum up here of uh, name, the name constants. And then in here we'll have a static a key, which will be our API key. So here we'll just say constants.key. Now the only method we're going to declare in here is a public function and I'm going to call it get response and get response is going to have two parameters. The first one is our input string and the second one will be a escaping closure for a completion handler here and this will be escaping with a result type. Here this will be a string and then we're gonna have a error in the failure case and this whole thing will return void like so. And I'll just line break it like that. And this is yelling at me because I probably have a typo somewhere. Let's see, public function, get response. And what is the problem here? Do to do, let's see. So client is client. Looks like I messed up my curly somewhere. Let's see if I could find it. That one looks good. This one looks good as well. Let me just full screen this so I can see what I screwed up. If I try building, definitely have a curly issue somewhere here. So we created this correctly. This is good. Let me actually get rid of this. And it looks like we are good. So there is a typo somewhere in here that I'm not seeing. So completion, escaping, result, string, error. Ah, I forgot the bracket here. Beautiful. So if we compile, it should be good to go. Now inside of here, we can simply say client. And the client is not global, so we should make it global. So let's make this thing a constant or a variable, I should say, and it'll be global. It'll be an optional OpenAI Swift type. And this way we can actually access this in here. So here I'm gonna say client, and there's actually only two methods. There's one method, I should say, one function off of here called send completion. There is a optional um, model parameter here, which actually has a default value. And that's the actual model you wanna to use to get the response. So you can use things like DaVinci, um, GPT, which is the default one, if I'm not mistaken but we're just gonna use the default one today. So we'll say send completion, passing in our inputs. Now for the actual completion handler here, we get a result back, but we're gonna do a little bit of parsing in here ourselves. In the success case, we get a model, and in the failure case, of course, we get an error. Now, once we get into the failure case, it's pretty simple. We'll just bubble up said error, 
And in this case, we want to actually get the output. Now, this model will actually give us a collection of choices. We're just going to arbitrarily pick the first one, and I'll grab the text off of it and coalesce it to an empty string in case it is, in fact, nil. Now, finally, here we can say completion, success, pass back the output like so. Go ahead and give this a build and run. Make sure your app is actually compiling and not crashing, nothing weird going on. And that's basically all we need to do on the API side to actually set up our client in app delegates. Once our app launches, we can say API color shared set up. And all that's left to do is build out our user interface to actually work with this API. So let's go ahead and do that in our view controller. So we're going to want two things in here. The first thing is going to be a field where the user can actually type in their input. Of course, you can use a text view as well kind of up to you which input method you want to use. We're just going to return this here. And let me just set a nice placeholder on this. So it looks like we made somewhat of an effort in making this look nice. All right, we'll say type here. We are also going to use constraints to lay this out. So I'll do that. And then I'll also maybe set a background color so we can actually see this guy on our uh, background here. So let me actually lay this out, and then we'll add a table view to pin our responses into, as well as our inputs. So we'll do add sub view, and we're going to say ns layout constraints. We're going to activate a collection of constraints like so, and we'll say here the height anchor is going to be equal to a constant of 50. I'm going to do the left anchor is going to be a constraint equal to the views safe area layout guide left anchor and we're going to do the same thing for the right anchor make sure this is right and we can do the bottom to the keyboard layout guide so as the keyboard comes up and down it actually automatically moves so here i'll say bottom anchor is constraints equal to view and there is a keyboard layout guide and here we will say top anchor like so so let's go ahead and give this a build and run and we should see our field at the bottom when the keyboard pops up, it should in fact move with our keyboard. Awesome. So let's actually add a little bit of space on the left here. So I'll say constant 10, and here I'll say constant negative 10, so it's not flush with the edges. Let's add our uh, table view, and let's give this a go. So for our table view, we're gonna want our models, which will be a array of string, like so. And we are also going to want our actual table view. So here we'll have the table of type UI table view. If you're not familiar with table views, I've got way too many videos on this already, which is why I'm going to go through it a little quicker. So here we'll say table, table, and once again, we're going to use constraints. So let's go ahead and set that to false. And we also need to register a cell. So we'll say table view cell dot self. And the name here I will use. Let's go ahead and get into this name here. The name I'll use for the cell here will just be cell, like so. And that should be sufficient for our table view setup. Of course, we'll need to implement the data source and delegate here. So here we'll say this is the data source, this is the delegate, and we'll need to provide those implementations after we add this as a sub view. So we'll do that. We'll say the delegate will be self, the data source will be self, and we also need to lay this out. So here it's pretty simple. We'll say left anchor. Let's make sure I call this table up here. Yep, table. Left anchor is going to be constraint equal to view safe area layout guides. Let's see, view dot safe area layout guide dot left anchor. And I'm just going to copy and paste this a total of, let's just do four times. We're going to do the right anchor, the top anchor. This will be the right anchor, the top anchor. And the bottom of this table is going to go to the top of our field. So here we'll say our fields dot top anchor. And if you build, we should have only one error, uh, and that should be for our table view. Looks like I forgot a comma there. All right, so now we need to implement our table view. So let's actually close this left side so we have a little more room to type. And let's do our table view down here. So we want number of rows number of rows in section. This is simply going to be models.count. And we also want cell for row at index path. We'll get the cell by saying table view. We want you to DQ a reusable cell within ID. And that ID is cell for the given index path. And we can simply return it here. But let's make sure we set the actual text on this from our models collection. So we want text 
label dot text is going to be models and then we'll grab the nth model from our index path autocomplete really doesn't want to cooperate today like so and one other thing i want to do is we're going to actually set the number of lines on this to zero so it does actually go more than one line and doesn't get truncated so cool we should be able to compile successfully we should be able to run successfully shouldn't be crashing the only thing left to do is once i type in here and hit return we should send that api request out and the way we'll do that is by leveraging the delegate for our field here. We'll set the delegate to self, and I'll also set the return key type to perhaps done so it looks a little nicer. Let's actually implement the single delegate method that we need, and that's going to be should return. All right, we'll return true here, and prior to doing so, what I will do is we have the text field, so I'm gonna say if let text equals text field dot text and this text isn't empty like so what i can go ahead and do is i can say api caller shared and we are going to use the only method which is get response passing in the text completion here we get a result and we want to switch on the result in the success case we get our output in the failure case we're not going to do anything. Maybe we'll just print out failed. But in this case, the important thing for us to do is we want to actually append this to our model. So here I'm going to say append output like that. And we're going to say self.table view, reload data. Now we want to do two things here. First, we want to capture self in a weak pointer capacity so we don't actually leak memory. So we'll go ahead and do that. And let's see what else we want to do. We aren't actually using this error here, so we can actually ignore it. And we also want to reload the table view on the main queue since it is updating the UI, like so. If we go ahead and build, we should hopefully be good to go. Let's see if I forgot to do anything. I don't believe I did. So let's give this a go over here. We don't want to do dictation. And let's type something in. Let's do what is iOS. I'll hit enter and Looks like it did append there. So it says development so hard. Okay, that's not what I typed. iOS development is hard because it uses distinct programming. Interesting. So it looks like we are getting an output, but there's two th weird things going on here. First and foremost, we probably want to append our input also. So first I'll do models that append text. And we probably want to clear out the text fields contents also once we send the request. So, or once we get a response, I should say. So here I will go ahead and say, um, what are the planets in the solar system? Go ahead and hit enter. And we get our question up there. And it says the eight planets in the system are Mercury. And it looks like the response is being truncated. So we definitely have a working app here, but we should probably take a look at what is going on with our response. And the best way that I would suggest doing that, what I would do myself right now, is let's actually print out the actual response that we get. So we'll say string describing model.choices. My best bet here is that we're getting a number of choices back and we're only using the first one, so we need to use um, all of them. So what are the planets in the solar system, like so? And it looks like, Ah, oh, there we go. The planets in the solar system are Mercury, Venus, and Earth. Again, it looks like it got truncated here, which is the actual response we're getting, which is kind of interesting that it's doing that. Let's actually specify for one final test another model here. So I'm going to say model, and let's see what we have. So we have GPT-3. We have codex. We can specify a particular co codex, the raw value. So let's use codex. And then inside of here, we're going to use, let's say, use Cushman. I have no idea what that is, but let's see what we get. All right, so I'm gonna say, uh, let's do a different question. What is the biggest fish in the ocean? I have no idea what the answer of this is. I assume some kind of whale. And what we get is a question mark, a dolphin, seahorse, and answer. So that seems a little questionable. Um, let's try this with Da Vinci. And this will be the actual last test. Um, let's see. Why is iPhone better than Android? Let's go ahead and see what response we get out of this. Kind of curious to see. 
All right, with more RAM and processing power, Android phones can multitask. That kind of sounds like it's saying I, Androids are better. So um, definitely works. I think the API needs a little bit of work. So uh, everyone go tweet at OpenAI. But that is the video for today. I wanted to use this API. I thought it was super cool when I saw Adam share it on LinkedIn. If you're new here and into iOS, Swift, Swift UI, uh, subscribe. Drop any com comments if you have any down below. I know OpenAI and ChatGPT has been all the rage lately and I wanted to do a series on it, but um, suggestions are welcome. Like the video if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.